Really, our goal is to be serving the toughest of the tough clients. We came to Hilliard House after being evicted from our apartment. Um, they moved from another state. They were living in a car. Being a, what I've been through, you know, the drugs and the alcohol, I really didn't have no sense of direction. Folks with domestic violence or sexual violence in their history, uh, mental health concerns, issues with law enforcement, felons, everything. You know, we, we get folks from all walks of life with dealing with all sorts of issues. It sort of all brings you to one spot where you're homeless. There were almost no facilities at all for homeless families or people at all. And so uh, we started this long process of uh, which turned out to be Hilliard House. It took seven and a half years of constant pushing. And after we'd been doing this for some time, we decided we need to go talk to the Board of Supervisors and just tell them what we're doing. We didn't know how they'd react because there was really very strong resistance, uh, not just with them, but uh, in the surrounding areas to shelters or to having homeless people. And they came back and said, um, you know, I think we've got a site for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, we were it, it still touches me because we would spent hours and days and weeks and months thinking about it and trying to, where would we locate this? So we quickly jumped in our car and drove out here. And it was perfect. They had the old house, it had a barn, that, which is now the dining room. That became the, the foundation for the rest of the whole building and our architect uh, did a great job blending all those together. Well, the architects wrote down what we wanted this to be, and those are the qualities that we wanted to build into it, and by and large, we think we've achieved that. And Carl said, we have to help people realize their dignity as human beings and understand that their life can be better. And you can't do that putting them in an abandoned building. We want to be a place that nourishes the soul and the spirit of people. The place itself says, we care about you. We believe in dignity here. I'm the very first child came that very, in the first family, a woman with her child. The child had been born in a shelter, had never known a home of any kind. She came in and she started laughing and giggling and she was so excited and happy. The minute she came through the door that we knew we had something. And when I first walked in that door, I was so grateful to be here. And I've been here and been supported and loved and cared for, encouraged. <gasps> And I think that's awesome. It's kind of scary to think about where we might be, you know, whether or not we would have been able to bounce back. You know, most agencies would turn a family away if they had children, specifically boys over the age of 12. Hilliard House has never done that. Our goal is to be able to, when they come into the facility, develop a family life plan for their whole family so that each service that they need specifically, so if it's a family that has mental health issues, that we're putting the counseling into place, um, putting vocational counseling, putting substance abuse counseling, all those pieces into place so that when, as they move through here, they're, they're, they can be successful after they leave. I used my children as that ring that you reach for because I know that I'm the only person that they are able to depend on. I'm no good to anybody else if I can't help myself. I have a family that when they started here, um, the children were in foster care in a group home. They, they were reunified on the day that they started here. At the end of their time here, um, that mom had full physical and legal custody of her children. I see myself in a stable home with a job and my daughter and I getting along better and being able to talk to each other better. You know, it's these, these real life 
families that are being put back together because of partially because of the work we do here and it's not just housing it's the program when I walked through that door it was like heaven it really was and my kids loved it and right now today they always tell me mom I wish we could go back and stay in the hell your house The staff is awesome. <laughs> Always keeping me looking forward, trying to keep me positive. They're pushing us to get better so we can leave here independent and on our own. We have a strong programmatic staff here at Hilliard House. We have a women's services coordinator who focuses solely on the case management of our women, making sure that they have everything they need from start to finish. We're here to give you information that will hopefully yeah. sway you towards the right decision, but we're not here to make decisions for you. Yeah. We have a child services coordinator who works diligently making sure that our kids have everything that they need developmentally, socially, um, you know, educationally, and working with our moms trying to make sure that they have the, the parenting skills that they need to move forward. We have a kitchen coordinator who puts together a lot of our meals for our women. She works with our women to show them healthy foods and nutritional values for their children. Workshops, they've been on finan finances, empowerment, vocational counseling, so it's been a lot of great things here. If we do, then we're gonna go back to what we know unless we stop and take a look at why, why am I continuing to do this? I can pull myself up, dust myself off, take the resources and, and the classes and the programs that they have available, use them to my advantage and come out on top. Uh, most of the folks who are ever homeless are never homeless again. You know, Hilliard House has over an 80% success rate of our families leaving here and not just, be, not just stabilizing but going into permanent housing of their own. She has a home, she has a car, she's working. Everything's cool. Our communities need to have these folks in places where they can help themselves, where they can recover who they are and how they want to live their lives and realize the dreams for their children. And the community has to do that. Why wouldn't we do that? We need to take care of those who have difficulty. Uh, every other week, roughly, we have volunteers that come and do whatever's kind of on a checklist of needed areas, whether it be replacing a light bulb or painting a room. Yeah. Um, we raised funds and then installed a little play set for the, for the kids here. Uh, you know, just to see the kids smiling, to see the, the women here that are smiling and saying hello, and, uh, and you know that there's good being done, it makes you feel good. It's not about our tea and our fancy. It's about what it can do for those women and children, and it can give them some hope. That funding goes to things that matter. Everything from general operations to keep the electricity going for these families, all the way into the programming that we put in place to help support mom while she's trying to get that job or keep that job. We could not do what we do without those partnerships. It just doesn't work without you. people who want to donate can see that whatever they donate is being used perfectly. Every dollar that comes in goes directly to these families. And it has an immediate impact. Um, you can see it in the children, you can see it in the women. This is a great investment. Uh, it's also an investment that has proven itself. Now more than ever we need your help. There are so many things that we need like clothes, business suits, different things that can be donated. And we can dream and we can see past the circumstance that our families are in right now to what they will be and what they can be. Um, and with adequate funding, I mean, the sky's the limit. When you have a vision for something and you just don't give up, you can achieve miraculous things. And to me, this will always be a big part of my life and something I will always care about. And I hope it goes on for 100 years. So.